In this video, we want to demonstrate why the Dirac delta function is an even function. Now, in the last video in this series concerning differential equations and the uh, Dirac delta function, incidentally, the playlist for all the videos is at digital-university.org. In the uh, previous video, we had proven the scaling property of the Dirac delta function, that the Dirac delta function of some constant times a variable t is equal to 1 over the absolute value of that constant times the Dirac delta function of just t by itself. So the fact that the Dirac delta function is an even function just falls out from this. If a is plus 1, we just have this. 1 over 1 is 1. If a is minus 1, then that's equal to 1 over absolute value of minus 1 times this. And of course, this is just 1. 1 over 1 is 1, leaving us with this, showing then that, in fact, the Dirac delta function is an even function. So that just, um, that consequence just falls out from the scaling property of the Dirac delta function, which we proved uh, in the previous video. Um, also, if you think back to when we introduced the Dirac delta function, remember we said it has this, well, it's a strange function all the way around, um, where this equals 0 or it's undefined if the argument here is not 0 then this is 0 if this is 0 then it's undefined so, so the closest that we can try to have a graphical representation if this is the t-axis, then when t equals 0, you'd have like a spike. And then we had, didn't prove it, but we tried to provide um, at least a rationale as to why this integral why that equals 1. And the way we did that, we considered this kind of an example. Again, the t-axis here can be 0. And we considered a rectangle that is centered on 0. So that the height of it, if this is the base, is x, or from here to here is x divided by 2. But if the base is x, the height is 1 over x. The area of the rectangle is going to be 1. Now, if we compress this together so it gets narrower and narrower, then the rectangle is going to get higher and higher still with an area, of course, of 1. And we imagine if we take this all the way to its natural limit, we would have this, the area underneath it being 1, at least giving a justification um, for this equation. It doesn't really prove it um, rigorously from a mathematical point of view, but hopefully it gives us some insight. But notice here, um, this function, this simple rectangle that we're using to try to approximate 
the Dirac delta function itself is an even function. And we also, back when we introduced the uh, Dirac delta function, we said that another common function that's used to approximate it is the Gaussian distribution. Here can be zero. And this can be f of t. Where the area underneath this curve is one. Notice that this is an even function. f of x is the same thing as f of minus x. And if we, again, just compress it so it's very close together, then it becomes very high, like this, again, with an area equal to 1. And if we take this to its natural limiting process, we would get that spike. But again, the function that we're trying to use to approximate the Dirac delta function is an even function. So perhaps we're not surprised that the Dirac delta function itself is an even function, but the way to show that formally, of course, is to remember what we did in the previous video, considering the scale property of the Dirac delta function. But once we do that, having a either be plus 1 or minus 1, then of course it just falls right out. Then it's really obvious that, yes, indeed, the Dirac delta function itself is an even function. Um, okay, we have one more mathematical property um, to demonstrate for the Dirac delta function, but let's do that in the next video. So coming for the next video, we have one more uh, demonstration of a common mathematical property for the Dirac delta function.